Welcome back for week number 12 of AP Research. We're going to deal with more of writing your introduction. So where have you been? Just to remind you in case you forgotten already. So you came into the class with an idea, you did some background research, you wrote an annotated bibliography. As a result of that annotated bibliography, you found where the knowledge gap is, you have a research question. You have a research question, life is good because you got a research question. Catch is now we need to do the research and we also need to start writing it up. So last week you were asked to turn in a draft introduction. You didn't know what you were doing, and since memes can tell us anything and everything we could ever possibly want, that was you last week when you realized I have a paper to turn in. And then you looked at what you really did and you realized that eh, your paper wasn't that great. I'm okay with whatever you turned in because it's a draft. If all you turned in was a paragraph, life is good because it was a draft. <clears throat> it's not meant to be the final product. You're going to be continually working on it. And I won't be surprised if the final version that you end up turning into me gets changed by the time you actually turn in the actual paper. I would not be surprised in any way, shape, or form if you end up doing that. And feel free to. I know I was changing my introduction all throughout the writing process and the research process. So for those of you who aren't quite sure what to do with your introduction, again, your goal is to bring us with you into your research journey. So we need to get into your head. One of the ways that makes it easiest on you to outline this, and I took this from the Bedford Researcher, which is a lovely book that looks like this. I got a free copy. I don't have a class set. It'd be nice. But it's one of the books you could borrow if you felt like it, is it helps if you make an outline. So if you have an outline, you know where you're going. You could sit there and start outlining what your major points are, so what do you really want to say, what, what evidence do you have to back up those points, what citations are you going to use, so that now all you have to do is follow your outline. Your outline is, here are my thoughts on writing my paper. I know what I would like to say. I know when I would like to say it. I know what I want, what evidence I'm going to use, so that I can drag you along from, here's the big picture. Now come with me while I focus in on my topic until eventually notice we have a gap. Notice we have a gap. Notice we have a gap. And you eventually arrive at your question. And if you need to, be explicit and say, here's my research question. I did that. There's nothing I think inherently wrong with that. The catch is your introduction needs to match your style. So what I did was I just took a whole bunch of sample papers and I just started yanking introductions from them. So you can see that the history one has an introduction, but then it even flat out says, oh, and here is a hypothesis about it. This actually was a history dealing with law. There's a sociology paper dealing with how ethnic groups are treated. There's one dealing with actual science, and they were dealing with something with blood cells, because I see macrophages up there. We have an art paper, so it was dealing with Japanese animation, and it was just a straightforward introduction. We had an economics paper, which actually had an introduction and a lit review. So it was just, oh, okay, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. I keep saying introduction, but if that means you have a separate introduction and lit review, then that's what you need to do. It's whatever the style you are noticing when you keep reading research papers. If they always seem to have an introduction and a lit review or something like that, or they have a hypothesis section, or it just says lit review, or it just says overview, or whatever it is, that's what you need to be writing. It's not making me happy. It's matching the style that your field uses. So because this week is a we need to be working week, which means you're going to hold it off to the last second, shame on you, is we need to look at some deadlines. This week you're turning in your inquiry proposal, so oh crap. Next week, which is going to be Thanksgiving, what you should be doing is rewriting your introduction, adding to your introduction, start writing up some draft methods, making sure your annotated bibliography is good. When we come back from Thanksgiving, we only have, I believe, three weeks or so, three or four weeks, we're going to deal with making sure we know what you're doing, we have all the approvals that you need, you have your annotated bibliography done, you have an introduction done, you have methods written up, 
It doesn't mean that they are in final form, but you have stuff written down. We already have a big chunk of your paper done. You have methods and your introduction. This is going great because after all, if it's going to be a 20 page paper, but you've already knocked out you know, six, seven pages, you're a third of the way there. This isn't bad at all and you haven't had to do anything. But are you doing stuff? If you need to, you'd, I'd start working on your actual research and hopefully we've had enough time to go through and double check to make sure that you have all the appropriate IRB approvals or you've made whatever modifications you need to. Once you have IRB approval, start working. The IRB part is going to be where we need to modify what you're doing and some of you, yeah, you're going to have some modifications that are most likely going to be necessary.